What's going on boys and girls? We're back at it again with another video. Sticking with our New Year's resolution of trying to be more consistent with content. This is my third video filming since the New Year. I only uploaded one. I don't know if I like the other video, so I'm not sure if I'll upload it. But this is probably the second most question I see on forms and, and per get asked in person and whatever. Not for just this car in particular, but for any car. What's the best intake system? <laughs> and there really is no right or wrong answer for that. Um, to me, they're all the same for the most part. So let me give you a little pull here so you can hear my intake system. This is the integrated engineering. It's an open box. So the IE sounds really, really good. You're gonna get a little more noise with that open box versus a closed system. But to really answer the question of what's the best intake system, in my opinion, now take it for what it is, there really is no best intake system. It's kind of just whatever's in your price range and whatever you think is gonna be the best for you. It's, it's really just a noise maker. They say that you'll get that like 15 to 20 horsepower gains and torque, but those are such small numbers that you're not gonna notice that driving. You might notice a little bit of a throttle response difference, maybe slightly. I don't know if it's just more in my head that, you know, I've got a new intake system. This is what it, it can do, so that's what it's doing versus if it's actually doing it. Now I've had this intake system on here for probably about a year and a half now and no issues. It sounds really, really good. You get a lot of su supercharger one, which is 98% of the reason why I bought an intake system was just for a noisemaker. Like an exhaust, it's a noisemaker. Yes, it might reduce a little weight, might increase a little bit of horsepower, a little bit of torque, but not enough that you're gonna really notice a difference. But it's one of those things that, you know, you should do it, <laughs> especially if you're looking to modify your car. It's an easy mod, relatively inexpensive. For the IE, I believe I paid 350 for it. Yeah, 350. There's tons of videos on how to install them, if you're curious. They're all relatively the same as far as installing them for this car. Obviously, if you've got a different car, you wanna check that out for yourself. When I was doing my research, this was one of the noisiest intake systems I could find, which is what I wanted. I wanted to hear the supercharger whine, especially when you're getting on it or when you're downshifting. And what's really nice is if you're outside the car and the car's coming towards you, you can really hear that supercharger whine and then as it passes, it like switches and you just hear the exhaust. So it's a really nice melody that the two play together. I think the touring exhaust that I have and the IE intake, you know, really go hand in hand. Now another popular intake system I see is APR. Um, I mean, there's, there's tons for this for this line of cars, but APR is another really popular one. I was gonna go with them because I do have the APR tune, but I just wanted something a little different. I mean, IE is not really that different. It's very, very popular. So long story short, when it comes to intakes, for a majority of cars, I'm primarily speaking on my car in particular, it's all gonna be relatively the same. Just get what you want. It's not gonna make a difference. One isn't going to make your car significantly faster, significantly slower than the next car. It's, it's a noise maker in a sense. So take it for what it is. When you're modding your car, I do think it is a necessary mod. 
and especially with a lot of tunes they do require a bigger intake system so keep that in mind let's get some more pulls here but get you know get something that's in your budget don't go for the top name brand one just because it's a top name brand you know, if it's going to be six hundred dollars versus two fifty, you know, try try and stay in your budget, and and don't forget, you know, don't don't let too many <coughs> ah. and don't forget, don't let too many people sway you on what you want to do to your car. In the end, it's your car, and you should do whatever you want to it because it's for you and not for them. You know, it, it's a really for me, it's a fine line of like, it's my car, I'm gonna do what I want to it. But then I'm also taking into consideration other people's opinions and everything like that. Really, I should just not care what other people think and just do what I wanna do because it's my car. You know, and, and sometimes I struggle with that. I'm, I'm getting better at it. And I do notice that some people, opinions are swayed a little more than they should be just because of what some random guy on the internet says. So in the end, just get whatever you like. If you want more noise, try going for more of an open system versus a, a an intake system that's surrounded, a closed system. You're still gonna get supercharger wine, but you'll get more supercharger wine with that open system. So I hope that video wasn't too long. It shouldn't have been, or at least I hope not. I hope you guys are still sticking strong to your New Year's resolutions if you've made any. It's cold here on the East Coast. We just got some snow. So I hope you all are staying safe. Be careful out there on the roads. People are crazy. Roads are dangerous. <laughs> and if you have any questions about the intake system or anything like that, post it down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer it. I'll post a link as well to some more sound clips of just the integrated engineering intake on my car so that way you guys can get a feel for some cabin noise as well as outside noise. So thank you so much for checking out the video. Like always, I really appreciate your guys' feedback. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I will see you in the next video. Peace, Scotty.